I just got off of a conversation on my Facebook discussion board, Pathfinder Learning Center, and a guy asked a question about horse of fungus. He said, can you make a bow drill ember from a piece of horse of fungus? I thought, you know what? I never really thought about trying that, but now I gotta try it. And I'm supposed to be leaving for Prickett's Fort for the school long hunter here in about an hour and a half or two hours. But I came running down here to the classroom, grabbed me a piece of tulip poplar, trying to get me a spindle made real quick here. Since I sent that other bow drill set to that young man in Florida. So I'm just doing a quickie job here with an old hickory butcher knife that was laying over here in the yurt that we loaned to students when they don't have the right knife with them at the school. It's doing a pretty good job. Passable job, that's for sure, for something that's about rusted. So we're gonna make this quick spindle real quick. Get a piece of horse stuff fungus I've got laying aside and see if we can twirl an ember out of it. Stay with me, guy. And I took this piece of horse stuff fungus and I cut a really, really crude notch in this thing. Like I said, all I got to work with is an old hickory butcher knife. So I'm just kind of grabbing stuff on the ground. Now I think because the way this thing's shaped, it's going to have to be pushed into the ground a little bit to give myself a steady foothold on it. And I'll probably have to put it this direction so that I can actually put this underneath it to catch the ember. And I'm going to have to kind of step on it, push it into the ground because it's kind of dish-shaped like that. I'm not too worried about the mud on top of it, to be honest with you, because I don't think it's going to affect that fungus too much. So let's try to uh, get this spindle loaded, which... Boy, them dogs sure sound close, but I don't think they are. Sound travels pretty far out here. I can sometimes hear cars on the road, and that road's 500 yards to the front of my property from here. I can sometimes hear cars. All right, let's get this bow loaded up. A little tight for the spindle, but we'll get it in there. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, just broke it. All right, well, that might cause us a problem. Now, I haven't dished this thing out at all. Because um, I think that I can push down on it enough that I can dish it out as I get the spindle to turn maybe. At least that's what I'm hoping. I'm gonna have to cut that notch in a different spot now. And I'm not putting much downward pressure on this because really what I wanna do is create heat and not create a bunch of dust or eat through that tender fungus or that horse stuff fungus. Let's see what we did there. Okay. Now, definitely eat into it right there. Busted it up pretty bad. You can see that stuff's not on fire, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't get it on fire. The notch isn't anywhere near the hole, which is my fault, getting in a hurry. But I'm going to try to move the notch over here and see what happens. Now again, guys, this is a real hurry up, crappy job on my part. Um, but I really just wanted to see if it was going to work. So I've cut the notch in here really crudely with a bow saw. And now I'm just kind of trimming it out with this whole hickory. And I'm hoping that it's not too big. I might add a little bit more downward pressure this time. But I was actually getting quite a bit of dust off of that thing. And I'm creating a lot of dust right here with this trimming. I'm thinking it would probably be a good idea to be saving that stuff. To be honest with you but for sake of this experiment i know where there's quite a bit of stuff of this stuff on the property so now let's get this thing back in here i think i'm going to leave that dust laying there in all actuality and kind of give this another run and see what happens 
we're polished up on the front of this uh, spindle quite a bit. We probably should cut that off real fast as if we would on any other bow drill that we were making. Just kind of dress this tip up a little bit. Let's see what this does. Okay. Hmm. Don't know about that. Get this up on top here. Turn this a little bit. Alright. Give it a shot here. I ended up putting quite a bit of downward pressure on that. All right. Let's, uh, we ain't giving up that easy, that's for sure. So, let's cut this notch a little deeper. This right here to stand on that we might have something there let's see what we can do here with that I think we got it, boys. I think we got it. Let's sit there and breathe. I'm gonna get this camera zoomed in on that. We absolutely got it. Absolutely got it. So, let's get a couple pictures of that. If we can. That right there is what I love about the Pathfinder Learning Center. I never thought about doing that. I'd seen people make bow drill fires in chaga before, but I never thought about doing it in horse cell fungus. Guy brought that up on the discussion board and I said, you know what, I'm going out and try it right now. Took me a couple tries, figuring it out, figuring out the variables. I had to put some heavy downward pressure on it, heavier than I thought I was gonna have to in the beginning. And the payoff is a giant coal, a giant number. So, and that's a very small piece of horse cell fungus that I actually broke so it doesn't take a whole lot to do that. You just got to figure out how to manipulate the variables. 
I can't remember who discussed this on the board, but I really appreciate that, man. I get these pictures posted quick as I get back to the house before I leave for Prickett's Fort. Guys, I'll get this posted up as just a quick tip or trick video in the fire making series that we're working on right now. I appreciate everything that all you guys do for me. I appreciate the knowledge that you give me as well. And I'll be back on another video as soon as I can, guys. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this. Thanks, guys.